Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Today we are chatting about some meh makeup products. So these are products that are just okay. They are not um, bad. They are not, they don't belong in like the disappointing video. They don't belong in the amazing video and the favorites videos. Like they just are kind of middle of the road and I go through and I explain kind of why. You know, maybe it's a palette that the mattes are good, the shimmers are bad, or vice versa, or you know, they just all have their pros and cons and maybe a little bit more cons and pros. But I try a ton of products, you guys. I love trying makeup, I love playing with it, it's just so much fun. And because I try a lot of it, you know, there are products that are my favorite and that I love, and then there are other products that are really bad and that like, ugh, everyone stay away from, run the other direction, set it on fire. And then there are products that are just middle of the road okay. And I feel like a lot of the time in the YouTube space, we get very into like the favorites or the fails. Like we don't talk a lot about the middle of the road, which is why I like to, because I do think it's an important thing to talk about. So if you wanna see what products I've been trying lately that are just like, okay, middle of the road, just keep watching. Funny enough, actually all the products I have in this video are eye products. I don't know, that's not how it really worked out, but you know, it wasn't planned that way. It's just what how it went. Um, the first thing is this Mega Volume Mascara from Wet n Wild. I used this in my full face of Wet n Wild video, and honestly, Wet n Wild mascaras have always been kind of like a for me. They're just never like my fave. Um, this one, it was okay, you know, it separated, it darkened, gave a little bit of volume. The whole mega volume claim though, like, no, not mega whatsoever. Uh, I wouldn't even really say it was super voluminous or just like voluminous in general. It just was kind of just a very natural kind of mascara. So like maybe if you're trying out makeup for the first time, you want a really inexpensive mascara, you're not super into like the really lengthy ones or the super super voluminous ones maybe try this out but otherwise I just kind of think it's like I would rather just not wear mascara like there's just no point you know what I mean so that's why this one is in this video the other mascara I have is this volume hero waterproof from essence I bought this before going on a trip back in February because I needed a waterproof mascara and I didn't have one and I went in to buy my um, Essence iHeart Extreme Waterproof Mascara which is my favorite mascara of all time um, and they didn't have it and I was like leaving the next day and I was like well that sucks so I bought this one. And yes, it's waterproof, you know, it didn't smudge, didn't flake, it was actually pretty hard to get off, which most Essence waterproof mascaras are, like even my I Heart Extreme waterproof, it's pretty difficult to get off, you definitely need to use like an oily base makeup remover for that. Um, wasn't a huge fan of the brush, it's a very rubberized brush with like the same size of bristles all around. Um, it lengthened, it volumized a little bit, and it was waterproof but it was just not as good as my I Heart Extreme waterproof one. This one didn't give me the volume that that one does. It didn't give me the length that that one does. So for that I just was like well since I love one that is from the same brand that kind of has the same claims I'm gonna recommend that one more so than I would recommend this. So this wasn't terrible it just was not what the other one what the I Heart Extreme waterproof is. That one just gives me like almost slightly clumpy lashes, but so voluminous, so lengthy. Where this one, it like, sure, it held the curl, gave me a little bit of volume, gave me a little bit of length, but didn't knock my socks off, kind of a thing. Okay, now I have an eye primer to talk about, and this is from Makeup Revolution, and this is their Prime and Lock Long Wear Eyeshadow Base. The reason that this is in this video is because this is a very finicky eyeshadow primer. You could use this very lightly and it will be great if you use the tiniest amount it'll be great however if you get too heavy-handed with this you will notice your eyeshadow actually creases more um, than if you just don't even wear a base it is kind of like a creamy thin almost slightly greasy kind of a base it does have a little bit of like a beigey light tint to it but again, I just noticed that if I use too much of this product, I will actually get creases in my eyeshadow. And I don't have like super oily lids anyway. Whereas if I just use a really small amount of this, it's okay. But the reason I put it in this video is because there are so many good eyeshadow primers out there. I love the one from CoverGirl. I love the one from Milani that like 
I don't have time in my life for a finicky eyeshadow primer. You know what I mean? Like where I have to be careful every single day of like, oh, just dot it on like really tiny or just use the smallest amount possible. And like for some reason one day if I accidentally use too much, it's going to be crease city. And also I don't feel like even when I use the tiniest amount of this, that it does anything for my eyeshadow better than the Milani or the CoverGirl one that I love too. So I just feel like I don't have time to play with a finicky eyeshadow primer, you know? Okay, moving on to eyeshadows. Now, I love Believe Beauty. It's the Dollar General Beauty brand. It's so good. Um, but these products were just okay for me. And these are their Glimmer Pots Gel to Powder Eyeshadows. I love the shimmer you get from these. I love the creaminess of them. I love the colors that they have. I think they're really pretty. I have Gold Flake right here, which is a nice gold. And then I also have Girl Talk, which is a nice, like, purpley kind of shade. I'll swatch them for you guys if you're interested. And like they are like a jelly kind of product you could push down on them. Kind of reminds me of ColourPop but like maybe a slight more creamy than that. Um, and for that reason I think that they just they crease too much you guys. These so like they're not terrible but like I mean look at that. They're really gorgeous. They're very easy. I love a good cream shadow but these just don't set enough to wear like, I, it's kind of like that eyeshadow primer. Some days I notice them creasing more so than others, but overall I do feel like they crease and I just don't think that these are the best cream shadows out there. Yes, they're inexpensive, but you can go to Essence and get a good cream shadow. You can go to Maybelline and get a good cream shadow. You can um, go to CoverGirl. You can go to, there's just so many other brands, Wet n Wild, that have really good cream shadows and these just, they crease. And that's just, they're pretty, I really like the formula. I think it's unique. I think it's different. I love the price tag. Um, and I really like the colors, but they just, and I like the way they apply. It's just that they crease, you know? And it's not that they crease a ton, but they definitely do. And to where I feel like I need to kind of like blot it out. And that's even with an eyeshadow primer. So I just don't think it's worth it. Okay, the next product is this CoverGirl palette. This is one of their newer, like bigger eyeshadow palettes that they sell at Walmart. Um, this is the ascension palette is that how you say it I don't know um but okay first of all this packaging is huge you get a mirror which is great but like so much excess space I think everyone that's talked about these has said that and I totally agree it's just way too much packaging um also one knock is that I don't like that the pant sizes are different sizes I don't like when brands do that because I'm like well what if I wanted to use this shade more and it's really actually hard this shade speaking of is called bliss and this is a really great transition shade for my skin tone, but the pant size is so dang small that like I can barely get my big fluffy blending brush up in there. It's so tiny. Whereas like this purple shade, I don't need a big pan of that. I will never use it. So I would much rather just have a brand do an eyeshadow palette that all of the pans are the same sizes. It just makes way more sense for me. However, I like CoverGirl's formula. I think they're good. I prefer the mattes more so than the shimmers. But my biggest gripe with this palette specifically, what is my mother doing? She's like knocking something. I'm sorry if you can pick that up. Maybe she's in, is she in the garage? What did, I don't know what she's doing. I'm sorry. Yes, I still live with my parents and I'm 26 years old. I'm getting married and I'm moving out. It'll all be okay in the world. Anyways, um, my gripe with this palette is that all of these colors kind of muddy together except for like these colorful shades. Um, these like transition shades down here on the eyes they all kind of just look the same they don't look there's not enough like a dimension this one right here is your darkest shade and that's even still once it's blended out is not super dark it doesn't add a ton of dimension good godmother I'm sorry if you can hear that it is real annoying um but yeah so these all just kind of muddy together they aren't um, there's just not enough dimension in this palette and the packaging the different sizes and I something I found with these more so than the other ones than their other like true naked palettes is that these kind of are more powdery and blend away more so than the other ones now CoverGirl does have a very soft powdery type of eyeshadow formula anyway but for some reason these the the pigment or something is just not there they blend away way more than the other ones do so and they're more expensive I just don't think you need this entire palette it's just not worth it all right last but not least I have another eyeshadow palette that I've actually tried recently here on my channel and I used in like a testing new makeup video 
and it is from Makeup Obsession and it is Be In Love With. I actually decluttered this in my eyeshadow palettes and then I was like, ooh, actually I want to put that in my meh makeup video. Um, and the reason it's in this video is because this palette, the mattes, gorgeous, live for them. Shimmers, not amazing. Um, they, so you get a couple different kind of like shimmer formulas. This one and this one. So Dreamer right here, which is this light one, and then Starry Eyed over here. They're kind of more like chunky pressed pigments, if you will. And then Bound and Romeo are just kind of your typical shimmers. And then the rest are mattes. The mattes are so blendable, so beautiful. They're soft, but not too soft, where they just kind of blend away like that CoverGirl palette. Um, they give enough pigment. They're really, really beautiful. I love them. But the shimmers in here, like these two, I feel like I get a lot of fallout with them, even if I use a glitter glue, which is not my kind of favorite. It doesn't blend very well onto the eyes. And then these are just kind of underwhelming shimmers. They're just not amazing. To where I feel like for a $10 palette, nowadays you can get a really good palette for 10 bucks. And while this one isn't terrible, it's just like, why pay $10 for only the colors, like for only the mattes in here, you know? You can go get a City Mini matte from like, um, where is it? The little City Mini palettes from Maybelline, the matte ones. You can go get that for less than 10 bucks and, you know, have really good matte shadows. And so, I just don't feel like this is totally worth it just because I only really like half the palette. So that's why it fell into this video. All right, my friends, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you have tried any like meh makeup products recently, make sure to leave it in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye.